real quick. So e-goods is things like e-books. If you're a writer already and you've written books, e-books e on, on some kind of product or some kind of skill, whatever, is a great way to go. And I'll be telling you more about that in a minute. MLM is multi-level marketing. It's not my thing, but it's working very well for some people. Um, that's up to you. Um, auctions, I haven't got a clue. I know friends who earn a lot of money with it. I, it doesn't interest me at all. Um, monetize it is something I use on site, so sorry, leave that one for now. Um, and then of course there's joint ventures. Uh, although in, in my case I haven't I haven't set up any monetary joint ventures, I have set up traffic joint ventures. So I teamed up with one girl, Shane Sakata, who writes the Nihon Sun, and we did a tweet chat once a week on Twitter, and it's definitely worked at driving traffic to both our sites. So by teaming up, and because we're not in direct competition, we, we share a theme, like she's Japan, I'm Tokyo, we can support each other. Uh, and I think I definitely online that is a way to go. You, you, if, if you stay as a little island on your own, it takes a lot longer to conquer the world. I'm British, I know. <laughs> Lost the world. <laughs> okay, I said I would touch on this. Um, to website or blog, which is best? The easiest way I can think of describing this websites originally were static, but still are static. Um, the, the pages where you put them, they stay there. And they usually end up in a, it's, it's a tier uh, structure. So you'll end up with a top page and then it will feed down, which you'll see in a minute. A blog is linear. It's traditionally linear. And the reason blogs were created was to be a journal online. You were supposed to speak online. So your current post would be your current thought. So it was the most important thing and it would come to the front and it would drop down in a line behind you. So in search terms, traditionally, if you kept those two models, a website was easier for people to find your information, simply because of that structure. Google, uh, Google um, when, when Google looks at your site, they send out what they call little spiders that come to your site and they run around all the links on your pages and they tend to go three levels deep. It will not go beyond that as a general rule. So if you're on a blog structure, as soon as you've got post one, post two, post three, post four gets lost. And that's even if you wrote it three, four days ago. Now, with the modern blog, you can build a website. It's still it's a website structure. If you, you can set up the pages, so that you can build that tier structure. Whichever way you do it is entirely up to you. The only thing I would say is with a blog, you will not generally get much support in terms of if, if you want to build a business online. That's why I use sites so myself. Um, the other thing, I, as I said, the original difference between the two was the RSS. And you see, this is where I'm not a techie, you see? Really simple syndication. Thank you. I always forget what it stands for. <laughs> um, and it was a way of getting your news out really quickly. So when you had that thought, it went ping, and, and, and the search engine would pick it up, and it's right there at the front. But you can now use that one on websites too. So it's, the two are interchangeable. It's entirely up to you which structure you use. Just find the one that works for you. So this is coming back to what I was saying earlier. Um, you have an idea. Let, let's say you want to write about, uh, I don't know, skincare. Sorry, guys. Women, I guess, skincare. Like we don't care about our skin. I know, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> OK, OK, we'll take that back. Uh, let's say skincare. Now, I, I, I have loads of great content on skin skincare. I have lots of great knowledge. And I write it in a certain way. I don't use the keywords that people are searching for online, so they're not going to find you. And this is what this is talking about. Choose a theme that has demand. If skin, I don't know, if skincare in summer has demand, then go for it. Skincare may be well and truly done. 
I, and I'm going to show you a page in just a moment that, that you, you can check information that tells you what are people looking for, how much is out there, how much information is out there on this topic, what's the chance of me getting found if I use this keyword. So choose your theme, write with a passion, but do it sensibly. <laughs> Make sure you get found. When I say check the competition out, again, it comes back to that. If you're going into, into competition, like in my case, there's Expedia, there's Travelocity, there's all these huge travel sites, which it's tough. But because I've gone for the niche I have, Tokyo, it's a much tinier, tighter niche. I can fight them, and I am. I'm doing okay. But always check. If there's... The general rule that I've been taught to follow is that if there are 10 major sites on the exact um, theme that you want to write about, that are, um, do you know Alexa? you know Alexa ranking? Yeah. Um, so Alexa kind of collects data and gives your site a rank. If there's 10 sites within the top 100,000, forget it. You, you, it, it I would say forget it. It's going to be a real uphill battle. So choose your theme, do the theme you want, but take the time to find the words that are going to let you write your theme and be found and be successful. It may take a little bit of you know tweaking and thinking outside the box, how can I present it, but it's fun. So <laughs> I'd say do it. <laughs> um, and then the last thing then is, is to plan and in this case, I will use the word website. Whether you're writing on a blog or a website, plan a hierarchical website structure. How do you do that? So, I apologize. I was, again, I was hoping it'd be wireless connection because I was going to show... No, no, no. I have included some links, though, so you can check on your own. But this is the system I follow. This is what I use on SiteSell. So... Basically, um, I, it, it asks me, what do you want to do? And it, it will look for me vertically or linearly at keywords. And what it means by that, let's say if I type in Tokyo here, if it looks vertically, it will look for all search terms that people are looking for. With, with Tokyo, what it thinks of is an, as in a logical way. And it will bring me back <coughs> all these terms that people are looking for. If I choose the, lit the, the lateral way, it, the machine tries to think out of the box. And it, 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 you may think, oh, I don't need something like that. But it's actually amazing how it, you, you, you may not use what it gives you, but it will make you go, ah, oh, I didn't think of that, and I didn't think of that, and I didn't think of that. So even if you don't use any of the words it brings back, uh, okay. So I chose the example of Anguilla and just tapped it in. This one says about Anguilla, about Anguilla accommodation, accommodation to Anguilla. Ashley, can we turn the light off? See if that makes any difference just for this slide. Mm -hmm. No? Kind of? Maybe. So adventure guide to Anguilla, Air Anguilla. Here what I've got, it starts to tell me, this is the demand in any given month for that keyword. Now, each, each company has its own algorithms, its own, again, I don't deal with the tech stuff. Um, you, you, you're better to use one program and learn to use it. Because if you start comparing, you're going to start getting different answers from each one, and then it just gets too complicated.